Welcome to Speaking of Love, the podcast, and I am your host, LaToya. I created this podcast in honor of my dad, who was an amazing guy. He had an infectious laugh, and his spirit was magnetic. He was the type of guy who made everybody feel like somebody special. If you were to place him in a crowded room of 100 people, my dad would be the smartest person in the entire room. He was an award-winning radio TV broadcast engineer for many years. Born and raised in the city of Detroit, he was one of the first to go to college in his family. And while attending Wayne State University, he developed a lifelong love affair with the game of basketball. He was the shortest point guard on the team, but he could slam dunk the basketball with either hand. By all outward appearances, My dad lived a rewarding life, but there were parts of him that were known to only him. On March 2nd of 2020, my dad's private struggles became public when he took his own life in a murder-suicide. When he died, a part of me died too. And since the tragedy, I have become an advocate for mental health awareness and suicide prevention. I also created this beautiful podcast in honor of my dad and others like him who are struggling with the effects of mental health challenges. My podcast, Speaking of Love, is named after a show my dad once hosted called Speaking of Sports. Thank you for taking the time to be here with me today as we take a journey in pursuit of the strongest magnetic force on the planet Earth, and that's love. You're listening to The Journey Podcast. Suicide is a difficult topic, and today we meet an incredible young woman who lost her dad to suicide. Some listeners may be triggered by this content, and listener discretion is advised. Hi, I'm Petra Brunbauer, and with decades of experience with sadness, pain, anxiety, and stress, I finally figured out how to leave all that behind. And this podcast shows you how to break free permanently so you can reclaim your sanity and find the self-esteem and energy to go after the life you desire. With real talk about mental health, holistic healing, and the tough journey of coming out the other end, this is The Journey Podcast. Welcome to today's episode. Suicide is a difficult topic to talk about. When a loved one decides to end their life, it leaves behind a hole that nothing else can fill. In today's episode, we talk about suicide prevention. This is perhaps an uncomfortable topic to talk about because it involves fear, uncertainty, loss, and grief. But with nearly one suicide every 40 seconds globally, it's an extremely important topic to address. For every suicide, there are also many more attempted suicides, and helping and supporting people before they end their life is what today's episode is about. What do you say to someone contemplating suicide? What should you do and not do if a loved one is thinking about committing suicide? And how can you show love and support to someone who is experiencing distress? For this episode, I spoke with Atoya Bond about suicide prevention. LaToya is a legal support professional, radio personality, and a small business owner. She's also the host of Speaking of Love podcast, created in honor of her father, who took his own life in a murder-suicide. Since the tragedy, LaToya has become an advocate for mental health and suicide prevention. As a minority woman, LaToya is nationally recognized by black women in radio 
for her outstanding and influential contributions to black radio culture and digital media around the globe. Before switching career paths, Latoya worked as a school office administrator for nearly two decades. In 2017, she was awarded the National Life Changer of the Year Award for positively impacting the lives of her students. Latoya is also the Executive Board Secretary for the Down Syndrome Guild of Southeast Michigan. Additionally, she also serves on the Board of Directors for Kevin's Song, a nonprofit dedicated to ending suicide. Latoya is a respected community leader who believes that spreading love is the secret to her success. Here is my interview with Latoya Bond. Hi, Latoya. It is wonderful to have you on the podcast, and we will be talking about such an important topic today. Latoya is here to provide education and discuss suicide prevention, which is something very close to my heart as well. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Petra. I truly appreciate this opportunity. Yes, me too. And I am very, very happy that you had the time to come on today and speak with me. And to get started, do you want to share a little bit about your own journey and what brought you to do the work that you're doing right now? Yes, thank you. What brought me to doing the work that I'm doing now is on the morning of March 2nd of 2020, my father took his own life in a murder-suicide. He murdered his wife and then moments later turned the gun and murdered himself. So as a result of this terrible tragedy, my entire life has been changed and I am on a path now to help educate others about the importance of mental health. At the time of my father's death, he was under a doctor's care for mental health conditions that he had suffered from and also from suicide ideation. So that's how I got started on this journey. Wow, what an impactful journey. And I just want to thank you again for talking about what you have experienced and what you went through, because I believe that when you share your journey with others, there may be so many lives that are touched that you can help by talking about this. So thank you so much for the work that you do and for being so brave and talking about this, not just with me, but publicly and all the events and the talks that you do. Thank you. Thank you. And as a result of what happened with your father, how do you feel that your life was impacted by the suicide? Was there any mental, physical things that you experienced? How did you experience that? Oh, yes. I experienced a lot of hurt and pain. I experienced night terrors. I had a hard time sleeping at night as a result of what happened when I would go to bed and I would wake up, be awakened by visions of my father's final moments on earth. So I would envision him walking to the bed and having a seat and taking his life. So I ended up in the hospital about two months after his death as a result of it. So it was very hard. It was very stressful. And I went through a whole stream of emotions from anger all the way to blaming myself and uh, rationalizing I went through a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how did you cope with what was happening? What kind of help did you seek? And what did you find was most helpful for you to get the help that you needed? Well, one thing that I did to get help is I am a creative artist and I make wooden door hangers. So I focused a lot on my art. I focused a lot on my creative side and all of the pieces that I made, my art pieces that I made during that time, they became my therapy. Those are my therapy pieces. So I would go in the kitchen and bake or I would create art. I joined a support group for people who have lost others to suicide. I've also become a huge advocate. But the one thing that really has saved my life 
is I created a podcast in honor of my dad. My dad was a very successful man here in the city of Detroit. He was a radio TV broadcast engineer for nearly 40 years, very successful, and he loved radio TV broadcasting. So what I did in his honor is I created a podcast honoring him and his radio show many years ago he hosted was called Speaking of Sports. So every week he would go on the radio airways and he would do a show called Speaking of Sports. Well, my podcast is called Speaking of Love because I know nothing about sports, but I know all about love. So I created that. And every Saturday when I'm up and I'm getting dressed and I'm getting ready for my podcast, it's like I'm on my way to a therapy session because I'm talking to people from all around the world, different walks of life. And having those weekly conversations in his honor has truly been the therapeutic tool to help me get through losing him the way that I did. Mm, wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I guess if we have listeners that may have experienced the loss of a loved one or a friend by suicide, that's something that they could maybe also try is finding the things that they're passionate about or that they love and in creating things or in pursuing those activities, maybe finding some relief and some ways to move through what is happening. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. That is definitely the best outlet. I know some people take medication to go through it. Some people turn to drugs. Some people drink a little bit more. But for me, it was definitely my artwork and my podcast and the fact that I love to cook. And those are the things that helped me elevate and evolve. Mm -hmm. And let's talk a little bit about suicide and some common signs that someone might be looking out for in somebody that might be contemplating suicide. Do you have any advice on that? Oh, yes, I definitely do. The warning signs. How do you know that someone is contemplating suicide? Well, honestly, Petra, you don't always know. As humans, we are master hiders. We can hide our emotions from people who are very close to us. So you don't always know that that person is in a dark place. However, I can give you some warning signs. Lack of interest in things that used to excite them. I know my dad was a radio TV broadcast engineer. He loved recording things. He loved being on radio. Or a lack of interest in the things that you once loved. Not taking care of your personal hygiene or your appearance. Just kind of letting yourself go. Sleeping a lot. Becoming angry becoming fixated with searching online for methods to self-harm yourself. Prior suicide attempt is another warning sign. There are so many ways that people can give off a warning that they're in the dark place, but we don't always recognize it as being in a dark place. So what we need to do is talk and open up and love each other and let people know, hey, you don't seem yourself today, are you okay? Letting each other know that you're there for them, you're in their corner. Because one of the biggest factors for suicide is isolation. Okay. Thank you so much for touching on some of those points. And I'm also wondering, and this might also be of interest to the listeners, if you think that there is someone in your life that might be contemplating suicide and you might actually be a little bit hesitant or afraid to ask them about it. So what would be the best way to approach someone who might be contemplating suicide? The best way to approach someone who's contemplating suicide is to go to them with an open heart. Don't judge them. Don't criticize them. Don't even try to fix the problem. There is a direct statement that you can make to the person. Let's say you have a coworker. She hasn't been herself lately. You go to her in the cafeteria and you say, oh, hi, Mary. You don't seem yourself. Is everything okay? And Mary may give you a list of things that are going wrong in her life. Oh, I'm just stressed. I just went through a divorce. I'm not happy in my life. Your response to Mary should be, oh, Mary, I'm so sorry to hear that you're going through this. People who are experiencing these types of setbacks sometimes think of suicide. Are you thinking of suicide, Mary? Ask her directly. Don't be afraid to ask the question. But what can be wrong is how you ask the question. Let me give you an example of the wrong way 
to ask the question to Mary. Oh my goodness, Mary, you're not thinking about killing yourself, are you? Don't tell me you're going to be that weak. Mary, come on, look at you. You've got everything to live for. Don't do that. That approach there is not the best way to help someone who's already in a dark place. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. I guess they would probably feel very defensive and actually maybe even offended at that. So last thing you want them to do is close up. You want them to open up so they can come to you more. Make your heart a safe haven for that individual so they can come to you, so they can open up and be there with you. And if they do tell you that they're having thoughts of suicide, don't leave them. Stay by their side. If you're on the phone with them and they live nearby, stop what you're doing. Get in your car and go be with them. Stay with them until they get the help that they need. And the first thing that you can do to help them is call a suicide crisis hotline right away. And they will walk you and the person through the next steps that need to be taken in order to save a life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was actually just going to ask you that. So if you are in that situation and you have someone who might be suicidal, so you said call the suicide prevention hotline. And what can a person expect after they call a hotline? Like what happens next if you telephone there? Well, when you telephone there, they're going to do an assessment, what they call an appraisal, and they're going to assess where you are exactly. Are you just stressed? Are you really, really at that point of taking your own life? And if you're there at that point, then medical assistance will be needed, whether it's a 911 paramedic coming to get you so that you can go into a hospital for like a 78 hour hold. They will do that as well. So it just depends on the person and how far along they are in their grief at that moment. And if you are the person that has noticed that something is going on, maybe with a loved one or a friend, and you might be feeling very scared to be starting this off or to be asking about it, do you have any advice for the people sort of on the other end, not the people who might be suicidal, but the loved ones that are trying to help that might be afraid to actually ask about that? Do you have any advice for them? My advice would be to put your fears aside because you'd rather be wrong than to be right. And you don't want to live with the regret of knowing that you could have saved a person. You could have helped them in their time of need, but you didn't speak up. And I, I will stand before you today and I will say that my dad died two years ago. And every day since his death, I have been plagued with regrets. Because I didn't help him. I was his oldest daughter. I helped him in so many other ways in his life. I would cook for him. I'd help him with paperwork. He wasn't real good with computers. I would help him with the computer. Oh, dad, I can show you how to open your email. My dad was everything to me. And I couldn't be there for him when he needed me the most. Mm -hmm. I saw warning signs, but I didn't recognize them as suicide. So I don't want you all, your audience, Petra, I don't want them to live with any regrets. I would rather for you to be wrong and to be afraid and approach them anyway than to live with the fact that you could have saved them and you didn't do it. Go afraid. Do it anyway. But do it with love. Wow. That's really powerful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And if someone is listening right now who might be contemplating suicide, what would you say to help them at this moment? Well, the first thing I would say to them is that you're not alone. Life is so hard. You have good moments. You have bad moments. You have problems. You have people who have hurt you. Do you know that eight months after my dad took his own life, my husband walked out of my life and he left me for another lady? Wow. So... You want to know how I felt in those moments? I felt the same way that you feel right now. This person I'm talking to right now who's feeling suicidal, let me tell you, you're not alone. I've been there. But what I want to say to you is suicide is not the answer. What you're going through is not going to be forever. Talk to someone. Tell them how you feel. Call me. Call Petra. Dial 988. Seek help. because. There's always another side. 
I'm happier in my life now. I'm better. I'm not in that dark space anymore. So what I want to say to you is stay awake for the rebirth because you don't know what's going to happen around the corner. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Whatever hardship and failure that you feel that you're in right now, it's not going to last forever. You matter and you have a divine purpose for being here on the planet Earth. You just need to seek out and get help and know that you are not alone. If you stand in a room with 20 people, two of those people are having thoughts of suicide at that very moment. You are 10 times more likely to encounter someone who's having suicidal thoughts than you are to encounter someone who's suffering a heart attack. Suicide is very common. People just don't talk about it. So it's okay to feel that way. But the wrong thing is to not get help. So please talk to someone. We need you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your thoughts on that. And I can hear your own passion coming through and how heartfelt your experience has been. And again, I just want to thank you for putting that out on this podcast and talking about that. And I think we'll be touching so many lives with that. Yes. And Petra, if you don't mind, I just want to take a moment because I've focused a lot in this episode here about my dad. But at the beginning, I mentioned that it was a murder suicide. What I want to say about my dad's wife is that the couple had only been married for nine months. They went to the same high school and they met up later, years later in their 60s, and they got married and they had only been married for nine months. She was a beautiful person. She loved my dad. She was in all four of his corners. She helped him in so many ways, but I don't have permission from her family to really discuss her or to mention her name. For legal reasons, that's why I'm not talking about her, but I want you all to know that I'm not dismissing what he did to her, and in no way am I dishonoring her. It's just that I don't have permission from the family, if you all could understand the reason why I'm not focusing my grief on her, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't have permission. The family has distanced themselves from us. And it's just a situation where out of respect, it's better to say nothing than to say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And thank you for mentioning that, because that could definitely be for the loved ones that are left behind. I mean, this is, I would think, the most difficult thing that you will go through. And in that grief that you're going through, there might be a whole host of emotions and maybe also her family is experiencing, you know, some of that anger and things like that. So yeah, fair enough, but we'll leave it there. And we'll just know that we keep everyone in our thoughts, <laughs> everyone who was involved that just can't be talked about at the moment. So yeah. And you mentioned at the beginning that one of the most important factors for suicide is isolation. So do you have any advice for people who might be concerned about their loved ones, anything in particular that they should be doing, maybe, you know, reaching out more or checking on people more? Is there anything that you would advise so that we can maybe cut down the isolation a little bit? Yeah, sure. One thing you can do is just let the person know that you're there because isolation, of course, it makes people feel alone. And the more time they spend alone, the more alone they're going to feel. So what you need to do is, I did a radio show the other day and a guy said that he was gonna go over to his son's house and take him somewhere because he felt that his son may be suicidal. And I love what he said, go to him and take him somewhere. Take him out of that environment, the room that he's closed up in or the basement dining room where he's been hiding out, so to speak. Take them somewhere. Spend time with them. Let them know you care. Call them. Text them. Just be in their face. Just let them know, I am not going anywhere. I'm worried about you and I care. And just interact with them the best way that you can. Mm -hmm. If they're at a distance, maybe you can video chat with them, FaceTime, send them a gift. Let them know that you're there for them. That's the one thing that people who are suicidal need is someone to show them that they matter. Yeah, absolutely. 
And let's talk about some of the resources that you also mentioned to me before we recorded this podcast, because I think it's important that people also get a sense of how much help is out there if A, they're contemplating suicide or B, they're a family member of someone who might be contemplating suicide or a friend. So do you want to go over some of the resources that you work with, some of the resources that are available to people? Sure, I can do that. The first resource I'd like to provide is called Suicide Prevention Alliance. The website is suicidepreventionalliance.org, and they have a wealth of information there. They have tools. They have resources where you can reach out for help. That's suicidepreventionalliance.org. And then I would also like to refer you to an organization I am on the board of directors for, and this organization is called Kevin's Song, kevinsong.org. Kevin Song is a nonprofit organization. The mission is to put an end to suicide, and it has been created by a husband and wife duo. The husband and wife lost their son, Kevin, to suicide. And so they started this beautiful organization. And if you go to their website, kevinsong.org, they have a wealth of resources, videos, books, people from the medical field, people from all walks of life there to help you, to assist you. They have written material, recorded material. It's kevinsong.org. And of course, you can always dial 988 here in the United States. I'm not sure where you are, Petra, but here it's 1-800-273-TALK is one number you can call. And the second number is 988 Call those numbers and they can give you a list of resources and help you based on your geographical location. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing those resources. And as Latoya mentioned in the beginning, she also has her own podcast called Speaking of Love. And you can listen in from your favorite podcast provider. And we will be linking to Latoya's podcast and all of the resources that she mentioned in the show notes. So if you feel that you need to connect with one of those resources, please check out the show notes for all of those links. And we will also be linking to a crisis page in those show notes that gives you some more information on crisis support in different countries. So we have a little bit more information for Canada, the UK, Australia, some of the European numbers so that you can look in there as well if you're not located in the US. Well, thank you, Latoya, for taking the time to speak with me today. And thank you for doing this hugely important work and providing education and resources about suicide and suicide prevention. And as you mentioned, when we first spoke, even if this helps just one person, it's all worth it. And I hope that our listeners have taken away something that helps them or maybe a loved one or a friend in need. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much, Petra, for this opportunity. And thank you for what you're doing to help people. I truly admire people who have dedicated their lives to enhancing the lives of other people. And that's what you have done, Petra. And I truly respect and admire what you have accomplished. And I just want to say to you, keep up the good work. Oh, thank you so much. That's so kind of you to say. I feel like we all connect together and we all work together to try and bring just a little bit more hope, a little bit more information and love to the world. So I think, like you said, if it helps one person, then it's all been worth it. Yes, it has. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much and take care, Latoya. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. And remember, love is the thing that makes all things beautiful. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen in. If you enjoy the Journey podcast, please subscribe, share on social media and leave us a review. And be sure to get your copy of our brand new ebook called Break Free. Sending you love and courage and see you next week. Until then, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram and the Journey blog.